Hey guys, how's it going? This right here is the Asus Expertbook P2, which marks the company's entrant into the whole business ecosystem. Like not an ecosystem, but the whole business market where it can sell laptops that appeal to business and basically work users. Which makes a lot of sense, you know. We are all working from home, and it does make a lot of sense to make bring out a new product that appeals to work users. But my point is, is the Expertbook P2 really the best choice out there? Well, let's try and answer that question in my in-depth full review of the Asus Expertbook P2. This is Varun from Guiding Tech, and let's get started. Okay, so let's kick things off with the design section. Now, right off the bat, this looks like a very office kind of a laptop, and by that. I mean, it's a very boring design. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just saying it's one of those designs that really blends in with your office workspace. See, when you talk of a professional laptop, this is mostly the kind of design that you want, right? You don't want glaring RGB lights everywhere that attracts everyone's attention. Instead, something like this blends in well with your office, and I can see the direction that Asus was going with this one. The blockish design is neat, isn't super sharp on the edges or anything, and the finish looks pretty decent. That said, I do have a couple of things that I don't really fancy or I'm not entirely happy about. First up is the build. See, this has a plastic build, and it, that factor does not sound good. I mean, yeah, does not sound good. But anyway, on the plus side, at least the laptop is graded for military grade protection and will survive all your drops. It also has a steel support brace below the keyboard, so there's literally minimal to no flex at all, which is another great part. And the lid here is aluminum alloy, so I mean, yeah, that is still good. So kind of helps keep the weight down while still ensuring some sort of uh, security and durability. So that's fine, not a big issue. The other issue that I have is with the finish. See the finish here is uh, a fingerprint magnet. Like seriously, it's so easy to get fingerprints and stains on this thing. It's just really annoying. On the plus side, though, it's quite easy to clean as compared to one of those cheaper frosted matte finishes that a lot of laptops have in this price segment. And you know, cleaning that kind of a surface is really quite a hectic task. Now, being a business work laptop, ports and I/O have to be given a lot of importance. And Asus is going all out on this one. I mean, look at this. Who puts a frigging VGA port on a laptop in 2020? Well, Asus does that, and I can see how it totally makes a lot of sense. Other than that, we have a USB 3.2 port, a USB 2.0 port, and a micro SD card slot. Over to the left side, you get an RJ45 Ethernet port, a USB C 3.2 port, a full-sized HDMI port, and another USB 3.2 port. Except for this one really funny thing. I mean, I genuinely feel that the laptop should have come with a DVD writer. Yeah, sounds weird, no? Well, here's the even more weirder part. Asus thought it was a great idea to bundle the drivers for this laptop in a DVD disc. Yeah, in 2020. So they're giving you a DVD disc with all the drivers for a laptop that does not have a DVD disc reader right now. Anyway, on the whole, I don't have a lot of complaints with the laptop's design, considering the market that it's targeting. It feels like a modern refresh of your Dell Watchtowers and the Lenovo ThinkPads, and kind of makes sense. It's not bezel-less, it's not flamboyant, it does not have any sort of RGB or anything. But the design once again works for a professional environment, so yeah, it's fine. Okay, next up we have the <coughs> display. Yeah. Well, it's your typical office style display and by that once again, I mean, there's nothing fancy or great about it. The colors are slightly on the warmer side and it almost feels like it's having that night mode filter turned on constantly. The color reproduction is just at 62% sRGB, so yeah, I mean, it's not that great. Now that night mode thing that I mentioned might come in handy because if you're going to be using your screen for a very long time, eliminating all that blue light could help uh, put less strain on your eyes. 
yes that's a debatable topic and i'm not sure asus actually intended to do that because i've seen a lot of panels on the cheaper vivo books that also have a tinted display so i'm not sure asus was actually intending to implement this but then again that's basically the gist of it there's not a lot to talk about the display here you get an average panel with average color reproduction decent brightness levels slightly slimmer bezels on the sides but you still have a good uh, top up and a big chin and and yeah there's nothing fancy going on here which is kind of fine considering that this is once again like i said a work laptop okay now next up is the keyboard on this thing and that is my biggest gripe with this laptop this is a bad keyboard Okay, I mean it's not a bad bad keyboard, but think of it as this way. I can understand that for a work laptop, you can compromise on the design. You're going for a very basic thing. You can compromise on the display once again for a basic thing. Then there are the speakers and other stuff that I will be talking about in detail uh, later on this review. And those are things that you can compromise upon because it is a work laptop. I get all of that. But one thing that really like genuinely pisses me off is the fact that for a work laptop your keyboard has to have like the best experience out there. The keyboard on this thing is not that good, especially for someone who will be using the keyboard pretty much all the time. See the 1.5 mm key travel here isn't bad, but it's the feedback offered which is pretty bad here. See to Asus's credit the keyboard in itself is not that bad or anything the layout is pretty much the standard Asus keyboard layout that you get with every other Asus laptop out there regardless of the VivoBook ZenBook or whatever lineup you're using my problem is with the feedback offered the 1.5 mm key travel is fine nothing wrong with that but the lack of a spring action here is what spoils things for me see essentially it feels like you're typing on this surface or you're typing on a wall and something like that because it just feels so rigid that your hands your fingers they start to hurt i mean literally 5 minutes of typing on this thing and i was able to reach my average typing speed of 75 words per minute which is great when you're just moving to a new laptop i mean i was instantly able to adapt to the layout because it's once again like i said the same layout i was able to reach my constant average speeds that's fine but my fingers were starting to hurt a lot and the reason for that which i feel is the reason for that is that steel support brace below the keyboard i understand that it's there to add a lot of durability and rigidity but that rigidity reduces the keyboard experience quite a lot i mean it reduces the experience so drastically that i feel i would have been much happier compromising on the durability of the laptop but just to get a better keyboard typing experience and just to emphasize on this point see you're trying to compete with brands like lenovo's thinkpad and There's a very very big reason why ThinkPad still sells a lot. The design isn't the best out there, but it's that keyboard that really sells. You go and ask any ThinkPad user out there and they'll just vouch for that keyboard. And it's not just ThinkPad. Even Lenovo's IdeaPads have that great great keyboard. Asus has done a lot of things right here, but that keyboard it's spoiling the experience for me. Now moving on, there's the touchpad which going by the flow of things once again is a very basic one. It has well support for gestures which work half of the time at least they work better than most of the Asus trackpads that I've used the surface here though is not that appealing to use once again nothing new there and sort of expected uh, it's quite small and quite compact once again quite expected and it also has this track point along with a dedicated left and right mouse buttons if you fancy that now, i don't really so i won't go into the depths of it there's also a fingerprint scanner to the right side which i really like Unlike other Asus laptops that take space on the touchpad, it's nice that it's located a little separately. Also, the accuracy of this is quite decent, like about eight out of ten times it was working, so that's cool. Now moving along, there's the audio part, and once again, very basic two download firing speakers, like just the basic part that you would expect from a laptop, any laptop out there. Uh, in terms of audio quality, the audio here it's clean even at the max volume, which is good. But the problem here is that the max volume in itself is not that loud. So I mean, yeah, that's a fair trade-off. It's fine for covering events or watching some office presentations or something like that. But uh, I won't really recommend to use this laptop for binging Netflix on the weekend. This is not for that. 
I mean the display in itself should basically stop you from doing that but the speakers are just another reason to not use this for any sort of entertainment purposes now moving on to the camera which is another essential part in current work times the camera on this is decent i mean it's still a 0.9 megapixel so called 1 megapixel hd camera and um, while it is shooting in technically 720p it's not really that great the camera should suffice you for your normal zoom video calls or google meet video calls or basically any video calls regardless of the application but uh, i mean it's 2020 guys it like seriously it's the point where you should really really start making better webcams like you do make better cameras asus has been making great cameras and been incorporating them on their smartphones i seriously don't see why you can't just put a better camera on your laptop the quality quality sorry the video quality is not up to the mark like it's fine it's pretty much what you would expect from any work laptop because every webcam out there is bad so yeah it's nothing good or anything and i was expecting for a laptop to launch in these times with asus being so heavily focused on this they would focus on better camera quality but not that good then we have the software part which is where i feel asus has done a lot of work like i genuinely mean quite a lot of work first up the laptop comes with windows 10 professional unlike the home edition most laptops ship with secondly the bios here is like you would get on their desktop motherboards sort of and not like a basic old school interface the laptop also ships with the asus business manager you can use this app to secure your disk drives and even your removable media there's a system restore feature inside that's supposedly better than what windows offers now there's also a file shredder in here there's a logo applier that allows you to set your company's logo on your boot screen instead of the asus logo So yeah, the company has definitely worked on making this laptop and the software part really really optimized for work users. Still does not come with Microsoft Office. Now moving on to the performance part, our unit here came configured with an Intel i7 10510U processor with 8 GB of single channel DDR4 RAM clocked at 2667 MHz. There's a single 512 GB NVMe SSD installed and you get Nvidia's MX110 GPU. Now in terms of overall performance, I'm pretty satisfied with the laptop apart from that 8 gb of ram that can be quite limiting when you're trying to multitask cuz we all know chrome is a sucker for memory and unless you're like me who uses edge for the web browsing like the laptop can get a bit slow but it's not really sluggish or anything it works fine especially when you use it for what it's intended it's intended for your work purposes and in that aspect it would work fine Uh, that mx 110 gpu that a lot of you guys would be focused upon because it has a dedicated gpu it's not a very great graphic card to be very frank with you guys it's more like an iris pro kind of a graphic card the only advantage you get here is that if you went with an integrated graphic card that intel offers that would be taking a section of your ram while the nvidia gpu does have its own vram so that's the only advantage that you get here nothing fancy also If you're one of those who likes to play a little bit of game while taking some office breaks, you can do that. But just keep your expectations real. You can play Valorant or CS:GO or Rocket League on this on low or medium settings, but that's about it. Now, Asus states that the upgradeability was one of the biggest factors when thinking of the design of this laptop, and to be honest, it clearly shows. Getting inside the laptop is super easy. Just unscrew all of the screws along the edges, and that's it. You get an empty space on the bottom left that you can occupy by a SATA disk drive. While on the right side, there's this big section that hides the two upgradable RAM slots and the NVMe SSD. You can upgrade the RAM to 32 GBs, while you can install up to a one terabyte of NVMe SSD and two terabytes of SATA storage. Lastly, we have the battery life. On the ExpertBook P2 comes with a 48 watt hour battery, which the company claims can last you a whopping 13 and a half hours of battery life. Lol. I was able to squeeze more about five and a half hours from this laptop with heavy usage. Uh, you know, turned on to the best performance mode. So I guess you can get somewhere around the neighborhood of seven hours if you switch it to your best battery mode. Not the power saving mode, but just the best battery backup mode, which I feel is fine for a laptop with a three cell forty eight hour battery. Good optimization, especially thanks to that U series chipset. Now. In my opinion I think that's great because since this is a work laptop almost 90% of the time you will be using it plugged in 
सो बैटरी लाइफ शुड बी अ मेजर कंसर्न फॉर एवरी वन आउट दट इवन देन इट शुड एड यू सो दैट वेन यूर ट्रेवलिंग समवे एंड यू जस्ट नीड टू ओपन यूर प्योर सिस्टम एंड हैव टू मेक दैट फाइनल चेंज इन योर प्रेजेंटेशन और योर डॉक्यूमेंट और समथिंग लाइक दैट द बैटरी लाइफ शुड बी मोर देन एनफ फॉर दैट यूज केस That said, like how I have said, uh, your laptop would be plugged in for most of the time. Uh, a lot of companies actually have this feature. In fact, Asus also has this feature on prior probably their ZenBook laptops, where it has that uh, battery uh, life saving feature, where the laptop won't charge over eighty percent or eighty five percent. And that comes in really handy if your laptop is being plugged in all the time. It will really help preserve your battery's health. I could not find that option on the expert book P2. Maybe. it's hidden somewhere that i wasn't able to find or maybe the feature isn't available threat and a new software update might bring it but yeah that is one feature that i feel should be present on every work laptop also speaking of charging it comes with a 65 watt charger which can fast charge this laptop super easily it's not heavy or even that big either and should easily fit into most laptop bags or even sleeves so yeah that's also cool so what's the verdict here is the asus expert book p2 worth your buck Well, the laptop starts at fifty nine thousand, which is nice. And to give you a decent picture of its competition, the Dell Vostro starts at roughly eighty thousand, like the base i five variants. Although they are G series processor, but that's a different thing. The Lenovo ThinkPad series starts at around seventy thousand. So obviously, the Asus laptop is undercutting both of those laptops in a lot of ways. I mean, there is a lot of corner cutting here. And while I'm okay with a lot of those things there are two major flaws with the expert book p2 which is why i'm having a hard time recommending it to you here's what first up is that keyboard that i talked about <clears throat> i mean like i said lenovo's thinkpads work because of that keyboard even with dell vostros i've used even their latitude series that cost upwards of 1.5 lakhs even the xps laptops they do not have a keyboard like the thinkpads For a work laptop, your keyboard is of the utmost importance, and the Asus Expert Book P2 definitely lacks there. It's weird because Asus has a lot of experience making computers, but uh, I guess they do not have that much of experience for work laptops. So yeah, that is one thing that they need to work upon. Just give in a better keyboard on this, even a slightly better keyboard, and with just a bit of better feedback. And I really feel with this kind of a price segment, you could tackle Lenovo and the Dell Vostros. And the other issue is not related to the laptop per se, but it's more like towards the consumer end. See, if you're out in the market buying a laptop for yourself, would you really, really be interested in buying the Expert Book P2? I mean, this thing starts at fifty nine thousand. For sixty five thousand, you have so many other options from all of the other brands like Acer, even Asus, HP, Dell, Lenovo. All of these laptops. Like all of these brands offer so many options out there that fit most of your needs. This is a work-oriented laptop. When was the last time you bought a work-oriented laptop? Like that's literally focused just on work. Wouldn't you want to buy a laptop that can also be used for entertainment needs? I mean, who wants a laptop that's just work, no fun? You cannot use this to watch any sort of a movie or something like that. It's not a gaming laptop. It's literally just focused for your work. So you do have privacy enhancements. You do have all of that. But then again, this is more like a B two B product. I can see ASUS reaching out to other businesses and companies buying bulk of this laptop. It definitely makes a lot of sense for a company. But for a consumer, I don't think I would be going out and buying an expert book for myself. I would rather just go and buy a ZenBook, which reminds me, our review of the ZenBook 14 with the new Ryzen processors is coming pretty soon. So make sure that you're subscribed to our channel, and so you get notified whenever it goes live. And well, yeah, this was my review of the ASUS Expert Book P2. Well, if you like this video and you agree with my thoughts, make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up. Or if you have any other opinion, if you have a feeling that okay, no, maybe I am looking a little bit too. Objectively into this, and maybe Asus has something going for it. Or basically, you disagree with my thoughts. Make sure to comment down below, and I would love to have a chat with you guys. Till then, this is one from Guiding Tech, and I'll see you in the next one.